Welcome to Better Police Reports. I'm Jean Reynolds. Today we're going to talk about Comma Rule 2. In previous videos, you may remember that I talked about Comma Rules 1 and 3. Those three rules are the only rules that you need to write most professional sentences over your whole career. So that should give you confidence. Comma Rule 2 is kind of the middle of the sandwich, and it deals with two words, and and but words we use every day. Comma Rule 2 says use a comma when you join two sentences with and or but. One more time. Use a comma when you join two sentences with and or but. Now that's kind of abstract, so we're going to do lots of examples today. So let's get started. The car turned right and I followed it. When you write the word and or the word but, you think to yourself, do I have two sentences? Remember, a sentence starts with a person, place, or thing. The car turned right. It's a sentence. The car is a thing. I followed it. It's a sentence. I is a person. And so we're going to use a comma. Now, where does the comma go? People sometimes are confused about this. If you got rid of your second sentence and you just said the car turned right even a first grader could tell you where the period goes the car turned right period that's where the comma goes we have a comma to tell us that the sentence is over but more is coming some people want to put the comma after and or after but do not do that that is not a good writing practice it goes after the first sentence. Now let's look at the second one. The driver saw me and drove faster. Are we going to use a comma? Do we have two sentences? The driver saw me is a sentence. It starts with a thing. It starts with a person, the driver. Drove faster is not a sentence. So we will not use a comma here. Uh, over the years, I've talked to some students who said they had teachers who said, Always use a comma with and. Always use a comma with but. That really isn't a good practice. You need to look for your two sentences. Now I want to move on with comma rule two in a different way. What I'm going to do is give you a thinking exercise. And what I'm hoping to do is to show you that you know more about commas than you might think you do. All right, so let's try this and see if I'm right. What we have here are the identical words twice. The suspect shot Linda and Joan. Notice I didn't put a period. These are unfinished sentences. You can finish them any way you want and put a period at the end. Here's my question. One has a comma, one doesn't. Would you say that this comma is just sort of an ornament that an English teacher wants you to use? Or would you say that it changes the meaning of the sentence? So that's for you to decide. Uh, what I'd like you to do is read both of these and then answer this question, how many victims? What do you think? The answer is the comma changes the number of victims. The suspect shot Linda and Joan at 9.30 this morning. Or with a Smith Wesson revolver. Two victims, but look at this one. The suspect shot Linda and Joan ran away. The suspect shot Linda and Joan grabbed his weapon. Uh, the suspect shot Linda and Joan dove under a table. The comma tells your brain that the sentence is over and Joan is going to be doing something different. And I would bet that you figured that out instantly. I, I talk to people all the time who say, I don't know commas, I don't understand all this stuff. Yes, you do. It's just something you've never consciously thought about. Let's try another one. Same thing. Identical words, unfinished sentences, one has a comma. Here's my question. How many searches did you do? What do you think? 
in the first one, you did two searches. You searched the car and your partner. I don't know why you would pat down your partner, but according to this sentence, that's what you did. So I searched the car and my partner at the traffic stop. Any way you want to end it. Now let's look at the second one. I searched the car and my partner interviewed the driver. I searched the car and my partner radioed for a backup. So the comma changes the meaning here. Now, uh, now we've, uh, we can start talking about a rule that some of you may have heard in school. Use a comma when you pause. You can see why a teacher might tell you to do that. I searched the car and my partner radioed for a backup. You do pause there. So why didn't I put that rule into my three rules? There's a reason why. It's a rule I never use, this pause rule. The problem is that different people pause in different places, and it just gets confusing and complicated. If you use my three rules, you will always get the commas correct. They're based on sound principles. I didn't make them up, so I can say that. All right, I have another one for you now. Warning, this is kind of a grisly one. Here's my question for you. Are the children safe? What do you think? In the first example, they are not safe. This kind of reminds me of the Hansel and Gretel story when the witch turned the children into gingerbread and ate them. It's horrible. We ate everything but the children. It sounds like the children are on the table waiting to be eaten. In the second one, the children did something. We ate everything, but the children turned up their noses at the broccoli. We ate everything, but the children weren't hungry. And now you can see another thing about comma rule two. Um, I would bet that you've listened to news broadcasts and heard a broadcaster stumble and then have to start over again with a sentence. And what we think is, oh, the broadcaster is having a bad day. Well, maybe the problem was when the sentence was written. Can you imagine a broadcaster reading, we ate everything but the children. We ate everything, but the children weren't hungry. The comma tells you that a new sentence is coming. All right, now I want to have you put in the commas. Here are two examples. One has the word but, one has the word and. Remember, those are your two words for comma rule two. Are you going to use commas in both, neither, or just one? So I'll give you a moment to read these and, and decide. I looked for footprints but didn't see any. Is that two sentences? And the answer is no. Remember, a sentence starts with a person, place, or thing. I looked for footprints is a sentence. Didn't see any is not a sentence. How would you make it into a sentence? You would say, I didn't see any. All right, let's look at the next example. I read the book and I recommend it. One sentence or two? And the answer is it's two sentences. I read the book, starts with I. I recommend it starts with I. Again, where does the comma go? In the same place where you would put a period if you had just one sentence. I read the book and I recommend it. All right, now you have all three of your comma rules. You can download and print a free handout explaining all three rules with examples at my website www.yourpoliceright.com. There's also a link in the description for this video on YouTube. I also encourage you to take a look at my book, Criminal Justice Report Writing. You can see a free preview at Amazon.com, and you can also purchase the book there. There is, a, and taught, there is an entire chapter on each comma rule. There are exercises for you to do, and in the back, there's a complete answer key so you can check your understanding. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching.